massive object emerging from hyperspace. You know what today is, guys? Today's like when you think you're all out of Christmas presents, you look under the tree, and you find one more addressed to you. Because that's honestly what it felt like seeing this trailer drop on YouTube and on Instagram. I didn't know what I expected. I certainly didn't think we'd be getting the trailer now. I'd seen a bunch of comments about people saying that they were expecting the trailer to drop today whenever I posted about the Obi-Wan TV show, but I didn't, I didn't think it was true. I thought it was another just thing lost in the rumor mill. But guess what? For not the first time, I am wrong. And that's okay. I'm really happy to be wrong. I love seeing new trailers for Star Wars stuff, especially The Mandalorian. I'm a huge fan of John Favreau. I I just think he's a great guy. I think he's a great actor, a great director, all-around good person. I can't wait to watch this show. So let's actually get into the trailer, get into the nitty-gritty. Let's analyze it. Let's look at it. See how it goes. First off, little detail that everyone shouldn't pick up is that the... Uh, the Mandalorian ship sounds like an LAAT gunship from Star Wars The Clone Wars or the prequel trilogy, whichever one you prefer, and it sounds just amazing. You know what, let me take just a moment, just a moment, if you will, just please indulge me here. Let's just listen to that sound. Now doesn't that sound nice? I think so too. So first things first, in the trailer we see a lot of Stormtrooper helmets that are on pikes. No confirmation as to whether or not there are still heads inside them. But right away that gives you a, kind of a darker twist on the ending of Return of the Jedi. And right off the bat we can get a really good feel of the tone of the show and how it's going to handle its violence, which is probably going to put Clone Wars to shame. No confirmation as to the planet, but it does look like the Mandalorian will be visiting Ryloth. We see a Twi'lek and also one of the weird dinosaur-looking creatures. I don't know what they, uh, what they're, what they're called. It's a Blurg, and I totally knew that from the beginning. A lot of interesting stuff. Looks like we're going to be seeing d the Death Troopers back again. Again, this is in a time where the Empire is no longer existing, and what we're seeing is more of an Imperial remnant, bits and pieces of the Empire that were left on the Outer Rim that didn't turn into the First Order. S disenfranchised Stormtroopers basically looking to make a quick buck, make, make a gang here and there, stuff like that. There's some really great shots of a speeder and a walker. Um, special effects are honestly super high. And again, I'm not really surprised. The budget for this show was $100 million, which, just in case you're wondering, the most expensive TV show season was the sixth season of Game of Thrones at $100 million as well. So that right off the bat, the first season of this show, which is already confirmed for a second season, is tied for the number one spot of the most expensive um, production cost of any season. So I would expect the special effects to be on par with Game of Thrones, if not better. There's a lot of great shots of some space battle. The Mandalorian is handling a cannon. We do get to see IG-88 in this, and it looks really cool because his action not at all looks like human. It looks very robotic, and I know that seems like such a simple thing to praise, but I'm actually really happy that they nailed what a robot or a droid I suppose I can't call him a robot, but the robotic movement, so to speak, that a droid would use and employ during combat. And it's really great to see IG-88 being in the forefront. I like seeing um, bounty hunters be more fleshed out. It's just a really cool concept. And I love seeing the standoff with the stormtroopers. I mean, obviously the stormtroopers are all going to end up dead, but I know it's going to be a really cool tense scene. I'm excited to see it, and I love that voiceover. Bounty hunting is a dangerous job, wouldn't you agree? And then we really get to see what is probably one of the more gruesome moments in Star Wars, but it's cut off right at the end. What I'm assuming to be the bounty of whatever job the Mandalorian is on is he basically decides, I'm just going to cut this guy in half with the door. Or, you know, he might not, but I think we're all secretly hoping that the guy's going to end up getting cut in half by the door. Seeing a lot of the bounties, or what I'm assuming to be bounties, in, encased in carbonite. Really nice touch. Uh, we've seen a little bit of carbonite, obviously, in Episode 5 and in Star Wars The Clone Wars in the, um, the Citadel arc. But we have, I like, I, it's just a weird, it's a weird small detail. Uh, the same with IG-88's robotic movement that really just makes this, it sells the show for me. It feels really immersive. 
and I love the title card. I love the cape flowing out of the way, and the Mandalorian is in the A just walking up. It looks really nice. I'm really excited for the show. Obviously, the show will be on Disney+, Plus, the same as the Obi-Wan show, Star Wars The Clone Wars, Cassian uh, and K2 show. It's all going to be on Disney+. Plus. Mandalorian will be the first show available. Well, anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. This is, uh, this is a pretty news-heavy day. I don't know if I'm going to be, be making any more videos about the, uh, the leak, not really the leak trailer, but the one that was at the Disney Expo. I'm probably not going to touch on that. Um, if you want to watch it, here it is. It's not really all that, really all that much is there. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I will keep you guys up to date on any new Star Wars news that may come out. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you again next time. You don't know the power of 1980.